Welcome, everyone. It's really great to be here again. And what I wanted to do is spend a little bit of time today rethinking what networking means for microservices. As I hopefully you do know, that Cisco is one of the leading providers of networking gear, powering data centers and the, and the internet itself. But did you really know we're also major contributors and sponsors of, of the leading open source communities, many of which you are seeing here today, from all of the, the array of projects in cloud native CNCF, uh, and OpenStack, Linux Foundation, Cloud Foundry, and others. We see that open source is a key part of Cisco's strategy moving forward in the software and services. And of course, our customers are all going to the cloud. So what, you know, this is what prompted us to start reaching out and forming partnerships with several of the major cloud providers, such as Google. And this is where we, we see customers are going as they're trying to figure out how do they adapt their IT infrastructure for all of the new phenomena and new services they can advantage of in the cloud itself. So of course, Kubernetes plays an integral role to this. And so what we've done recently is we introduced the Cisco Container Platform, which is a Kubernetes framework running on Cisco's Hyperflex uh, systems. And this allows you to have a consistent environment, whether you're running Kubernetes on-premise or in the cloud. And just yesterday, we also announced Kubernetes support for Cisco Cloud Center and AppDynamics. In this way, you can have a consistent environment for your applications in the data center or up in the cloud of your choice. A lot of this is built on a lot of the underlying technologies as well that Cisco provides in terms of, of, of CSR 1000V, virtual routers, virtual switches, to increase the performance and allowing these environments to stretch over more and more different application areas. And of course, what, a lot of what we're talking about in this conference is that cloud native computing is really driving this fundamental shift in the way we think about building applications. We've gone from monolithic applications to hybrid applications and now into breaking applications up into a set of microservices. However, when we do this now, networking becomes an integral part of the application. Distributed computing is not easy. Whereas we want an application team to focus on a very simple service, now all of a sudden we've introduced complexity because these services have to communicate. So do we have the right model for networking? Do we need a new layer in the stack to make networking easier for the development of microservices? And maybe it's not about stacks at all. Maybe what we really should be thinking about is, is there a networking service that we need to allow this advantage to take place in terms of building microservices? So let's take a simple example. Here's just four simple services, a web server, content server, payments, and order management. And things get to be pretty easy. It looks very simple. We can have Kubernetes scale these up independently. When we think about web serving, of course, we know there's a lot more to that. Uh, than the no-code example that we saw Kelsey make. But here you have to handle, for example, authentication. You have to be able to manage connections. You have to be able to do load balancing. You have a lot of things that you need. Now in a microservices world, however, not only does this web server have to handle all these communication issues, but so does the content server. So does the payment server. So does the order management server. Therefore, what was very, very simple now has become very complex and much harder for these individual, independent development teams to make progress. Wouldn't it be better if you could offload all of those capabilities, all of those issues of networking to essentially the experts and have them run that as a service mesh? So the idea of a service mesh is to take over all of the aspects of inter-service communication, driving policy, secure services, and so forth. This is really radically different. And what we've done is that we've done something in computer science over and over again. We've abstracted away the details of service-to-service -service communications, allowing consistent policy and being able to manage now these services without changing one line of the service code. This makes it much easier for IT ops uh, to operate these applications as they get to deployed. So I think that you'll see here, and I welcome you to take a look at the number of different options you have 
for implementing service meshes from Istio, Envoy, Linkerd, and so forth. And an Istio architecture in itself, as you get a conceptual picture of this, consists of a control plane and then a data plane where the traffic actually flows. But one of the places that we're taking at Cisco and through our contributions is stretching this notion across public and private clouds and multiple Kubernetes clusters. There's different proposals in the community that we are hashing out right now, how to make this a seamless experience that will really allow us to extend microservices across multiple clouds. And this, I think, will bring us into a world where we really are changing the way applications are being developed. We really want to get to the point where what we're doing is assembling ready-made, battle-proven, hardened services to provide those, those applications out to our users and deliver it anywhere in the cloud. So I welcome you to come by our booth in the showcase area, and we'll talk to you about how we're enabling a micro-cloud world made possible. Thank you very much, Gus.